Welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert, and in this episode, we're going to make this orb rocket robot game. It's kind of hard to describe because it's sort of a very unique game. I made this based off of another game called Quobot, which you can find a link to on the project page. But basically, you control this orb robot, which has three rocket boosters that are constantly circling around, and you can turn them on or off by holding down the one key, or the two key, or the three key. Or you can just engage all three of them at once, or maybe just two, but you don't really control how they rotate around the robot. You can only control turning them off or on, so getting it to move around where you want is kind of tricky. And the goal of this game is to pick up and rescue these penguins who are floating out in space miraculously without spacesuits. We're not going to ask any questions about that. And you want to avoid these monsters that are very frowny, who are also floating around. And if you accidentally crash into the monsters, they yell out, Bargle! Which I guess is monster speak for game over, and the game ends. Uh, you get one point for each penguin you pick up, and new penguins will appear as you pick up the old ones. So yeah, let's get started and click on Create to create a brand new editor. Okay, so here is the editor. We won't be needing this Scratch Cat sprite, so just right click on that sprite and select Delete. Next, let's give this a space background. So right click on, oh wait, have the stage sprite selected and then go to the Backdrops tab right here and click on this painting button that says choose backdrop from library and scratch comes with a whole bunch of these backgrounds we want the one that's in the space theme called stars that'll give us a nice star background that makes it look like we're just in deep space so now we're going to create the robot sprite and we're actually going to make four different sprites one sprite for the body of the robot and then three sprites for each of the three rocket boosters so click on the paintbrush button that says paint new sprite and go ahead and switch to vector mode so this is going to be a pretty simple looking robot we're just going to select the ellipse tool and start drawing out and drawing out a circle you can also hold down the shift key and then you'll be able to draw a perfect circle which is a lot better than trying to eyeball it like this so draw out hold down the shift key draw out a perfect circle make it so that the center of the circle is where that crosshairs is right here because we want that to be right in the center of the robot body and we can maybe make the lines a little bit thicker right here and a slightly different color so it stands out from the space color click on the paintbrush tool to fill that in yeah, you can see it a lot easier now against the backdrop of space. Maybe give it a lighter gray for the body color. And with the, the paint bucket tool, we can fill that in right there. Uh, that's a pretty good size. That might be a little too big, though. So I'm going to use the arrow select tool and just drag across the entire robot. And then grab one of the corners and just shrink it down just a little bit. Uh, maybe, yeah, that's good. So there's the center of the crosshairs it's kind of see. I'm going to click on the magnifying tool to zoom in a little bit. So here's the crosshair where the center of the sprite is. I'm just going to move it here. Actually, a better thing is let's bring the center crosshairs to the center of the circle instead. So I can just click maybe like right there. Oh, I'll try that again. Holding down the mouse button, you can position it. Yeah, right about there. So that sets the center of the costume to the very center of the circle. And so from here, we can just start drawing out the eyes. Maybe make that a thinner line. Couple of eyes. Fill that in with white. Maybe give it some red pupils that are rectangles, just that are filled in. A nice crazy looking robot. And then draw a line for the mouth. Something like this.
And that's it for the body. So I can open up the info panel by clicking on that I and just rename this to body since this will be the main body of the robot. Also what we should do is select the rotation style as the point so that way as this robot changes direction it won't actually change the rotation display of the robot. You can see right here I can rotate it freely right here the left and right arrows makes it only face directly left or right but then the dot makes it just face in one direction no matter what the direction setting says. So that's all. We'll add the code for this uh, later but first let's start drawing out the rocket. So click on the paintbrush sprite button again to paint a new sprite and this time we need to draw out a rocket booster and that's gonna look pretty much this all three of them will look the exact same so we only need to draw it once so click on convert to vector and you'll know you're in vector mode because all the painting tools will be on the right side whereas in bitmap mode they're all on the left side so go back to vector mode and here's the center of the robot you can imagine that the center of the body of the robot will be about right here we want it to stick out the side and be sure to have it sticking out the left side of this sprite and I'll explain why in a little bit but just go ahead and draw out a rocket booster that looks something like this and be sure that all the lines are connected to each other otherwise the fill part won't work exactly so draw this yeah so I don't want to stop drawing it here I want to make sure that that little blue circle lights up so I know it's connected and maybe just use the bucket tool to change this color to a lighter gray so that way we can see it oh yeah oh, that's also still looks a little big so I'm gonna I'm gonna use the arrow tool to select this and then just shrink it down uh, maybe a little bit more that's good and set this up right about there and I'll give this also that same light gray color and that's it so yeah first let's click on the info panel and just change this to rocket one and this is really important you just want to draw the basic rocket right now you don't want to add flames and you don't want to add the dots for numbering just have this basic rocket thruster shape sticking out the side and what we want to do at this point is then duplicate this sprite so create rocket 2 and then create rocket 3 now what we want to do is make sure you have rocket 1 selected I'm gonna rename this costume to off so this will be the costume that the rocket thruster has when it's not shooting out flames and now I'm gonna select this pencil tool and put a single black dot make it a really thick black dot but just one black dot oh maybe that's too big I'm gonna click on undo right here make that a little bit smaller eh, about almost halfway but not quite that's good one dot so now that I have the one dot there now I'm going to duplicate the costume for the on costume so select duplicate and I'm gonna rename this to on and now I'm just gonna draw out some flames so and it doesn't have to be perfect fill this in with some red so this way if you follow these steps exactly then when you switch between these two costumes the rocket thruster will be in the same place and so it'll just look like the flames have appeared out of nowhere if you're looking over here and we want to do the same thing with rocket 2 first we want to add the two dots to identify this as the second booster then we want to duplicate the costume make sure this one is called off and the other one is called on and then draw some flames coming out the side and I'm gonna finish this off with the third one um, one two three
and have some flames coming out the side here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's start adding the code for these rockets. So I'm gonna click on Rocket 1. I'm just gonna write out the code here for the Rocket 1 sprite and then just copy it to the Rocket 2 and Rocket 3 since they all have the same code. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to figure out what exactly we want this rocket sprite to do. So basically all it does is it just sort of follows the body around. So first we need to have it connected to the body uh, of the rocket. So let's go and have from the brown events section, we have this when green flag is clicked. And we're gonna have a forever loop because we always want it to constantly update its position. So it goes to the body, but if the body moves around somewhere else, it'll also update its position. So that way it'll look like the rocket the rocket booster is part of the orb. So from the blue motion category, go ahead and grab this go to. It'll say mouse pointer, but we can change that later to say by clicking on this black triangle, have it go to body. And so now if you click on the green flag, you can see it's constantly just updating its position to follow the body around. So even if I move this body by picking it up with the mouse, the code is causing this rocket booster to always jump towards the body, which is really nice. So it sort of looks like that they're connected to each other when really they're separate sprites. So we also want this rocket booster to always be circling around. So let's just grab one of these turn Oh, that's really fast. Let's slow this down to maybe like three degrees. So that's pretty good. And now we also want it so that if we hold down the one key on the keyboard, it'll switch to costume two, that on costume, so it looks like flames are coming out of it. So we're going to need an if else block. And this will detect if the one key is being held down. So from the light blue sensing category, grab this key spaced pressed and then click on the black triangle to change this to one. So if the one key is being pressed, we want the costume to be set to on or else we want it to be set to off. So go to the purple look section. We can grab this switch costume. We can switch costume to on for that case. And if the one key isn't being pressed, we can switch the costume to off. So we can test this out. So go ahead and click on the green flag. The thruster is moving around and when I hold down the one key, it turns on. And once I stop holding down the one key, it turns off. So I can just have a little short burst or I can just hold it down. Now this isn't causing the orb body to move around because we haven't added that code yet. But first let's go ahead and just copy this code to the other rocket boosters. So I'm gonna click on the red stop sign button to stop this program. So I'm gonna pick all of this up and drag it over there and pick all of it up and drag it over rocket 3. So now rocket 2 and rocket 3 have the same thing but we don't want the other rocket boosters to have the exact same code. For one we want them to be moving around kind of differently so I can have maybe rocket 2 moving by 5 degrees each time and also change this so that it's set to the 2 key instead. So that way the same one key won't control all three rocket boosters. We want them to have separate keys. And then the same thing for rocket three. Instead of the one key, we're just gonna have this set to three. And maybe instead of turning to the right or clockwise like this, we can have it turning the other direction. So I'm gonna grab the turn left and maybe have this turn by, I don't know, four degrees. So to remove this, I'm gonna have to grab the blue block Then I wanna put this back in. And I can delete this just by dropping it in the middle column area. And then I'll slide that new turn left block in instead. So let's test this out. Click on the green flag. Yeah, and fire rocket one, rocket two, rocket three. Oh, rocket three is, is not firing. Oh, <laughs> I know why. I'm going to go to the costumes. Yeah, I have this set to off, but I need to set this back to on. Okay, let's do this rocket test one more time. Click on the green flag. One, two, and three. 
And also I can hold down all three at the same time, or just two of them. Yeah, it seems to be working out pretty nicely. Okay, so the code that actually moves the robot body around, we're going to have inside the body sprite. But first, we're going to need a when green flag is clicked so that this code runs once the program has started. And first, let's also remember we're going to collect one point for each penguin we pick up. So let's go ahead and make a variable by clicking on the orange data section and clicking on make a variable and call this variable score and make this for all sprites. And this variable will just keep track of what the score is. So at the very start of the game, we want to reset the score back to zero. So in the orange data section, grab the set score and add it there. Now, another thing we want is we don't want the rocket boosters to appear in front of the body of the robot. So instead, let's move the robot body to the very front layer on top of all the other rocket sprites. And you'll find that in looks, the purple looks section. It's at the very bottom. We we want one this one block called go to front. And we'll also have the robot body always start right in the center at coordinates 0, 0. So go to the dark blue motion category and then have, let's see, go to X and Y. And we're going to change these to the origin 0, X and 0, Y. All right, so what do we want this to do? So right now the one, two, three keys for the rocket boosters really just control what the rocket boosters look like. It just switches back and forth between these costumes, but it doesn't actually move the robot around anywhere. So we can have that handled by code that we can add right here. So let's add a forever loop because we're going to be constantly checking if the one, two, or three keys are being held down. And we'll need some if blocks for each of those. So go ahead and grab three of these if blocks. And then from the light blue sensing category, we're going to get this key space pressed and add it in each of their, uh, in each of these hexagon sockets. And so the first one, we'll just handle moving the actual robot around right here. So when the key one is pressed, we'll add some code to move the robot here. And when key two is pressed, we'll have it move in the direction that thruster two is pushing the robot. And then the same for three. So how do we know where we want the robot to move around? Well, basically, we can actually check on uh, the Rocket One info panel. And you can see this code that's causing the robot, the rocket thruster to turn around, you can see is actually changing the number in its direction value. And see that. And so really, we want the or body to just look at what direction this rocket thruster one is pointing in and then push it in that direction. So let's go back to the or body. I'm going to stop that animation really quickly. Let's see. We want to first have the robot point in a certain direction that's facing the same direction as rocket. And we can find that from the light blue sensing category. There's a very complicated looking block that says X position of body, and this lets us pick out the X or Y position or the direction of a different sprite. So we can grab this and set that here, and we'll just change this to the direction of rocket one. So we can sort of see this right here. If we open up the info panel, you can tell that the rocket one is always changing its direction. And if we open this panel, if I'm holding down the one key, you can see that this code then detects, oh, the one key is being held down, so point in the direction of rocket one. And it's constantly doing this forever in a loop. So that's what's causing the orb's body to change. And the reason the picture isn't updating is because we've set it to this dot rotation style. If I change this to the all around rotation style, you can see in the game right here. But since we're going to have three different rocket boosters going on, let's just have it always the face facing to the right. So in that case, then just go to the dark blue motion category and grab this move 10 steps block. And let's just say we'll have it move four steps. So let me test this out, click on the stop and click on the green flag to start it. So 
Now when I hold down the one key, that should start, yeah, it's moving the uh, main or body of the robot around in whatever direction the rocket one thruster is facing. So that seems pretty simple. Let's, let's just copy the code for this by right clicking on this top dark blue block and selecting duplicate. And I can stick that in for two, except of course, this, the two key will be for rocket two. And then I can duplicate this again and set this to rocket three. So really it's pretty easy to have as many rocket boosters as you want. You can just keep cloning these rocket sprites and keep adding more if blocks. You can have keys one through nine or even up to zero for a complete set of 10 rocket boosters and start using all the other keys of the keyboard as well. But three is a pretty good number. It's not too complicated. So testing out all three of these rocket boosters. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so let's start adding the actual game part of this game. And that's uh, adding the objective of picking up those floating space penguins and avoiding those space monsters. So I'm going to click on stop and I'm going to click on this button right here to choose a sprite from the library. And let's see, we'll use the scratch comes with one of these sprites. There we go. Pico. Who looks really nice, but we'll just change this sprite to make Pico look really angry. Whoa! That is a huge Pico. So let's click on the costumes tab. Uh, yeah, let's click on X. Uh, delete all of these costumes. We just want the mean looking Pico. So first thing, I'm gonna have the arrow key selected and select everything and just shrink down Pico to about this size. That looks good. And put it right in then right in the center there. And I'm gonna duplicate this costume. And I'll make the second costume look really scary. Uh, let's zoom in here. I'll just add a red glowing dots for eyes. Oh, <laughs> not that much. Click undo. Maybe something like that. Ooh, yeah, that's scary looking. And maybe some brownie face. And just... <laughs> This isn't a really good looking mouth, but that'll do. Uh, yeah, add some white on the inside there. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> you can sort of see the other mouth underneath everything there, but here in the actual game, you can't really tell. So that looks good, so, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, that, that'll be a great animation. Okay, so let's add the code for this monster. If we remember in the original game, all this Pico robot di uh, monster did, oh yeah, let's go ahead and just rename it monster. And monster one, because we'll have a whole bunch of these. Well, just two of them, but more than one. And we can just duplicate the code after we write it out once. So if we remember in the original game, all this monster did was just sort of float around randomly and then also check if it was touching the robot, in which case it would cause a game over. Let's go ahead and grab from the brown event section when green flag is clicked. So one thing we don't want to have happen is since this monster can float around randomly, we don't want at the very start of the game for the monster to be right where the robot is because then you would instantly lose and that's not really that fun. So we need to make sure that wherever the monster is, it's not in the center. So it has to be somewhere around this edge and there's a little trick we can do for that so we can start off by moving the monster to the very center and then having it point in some random direction and then just moving a whole bunch of space in that direction and that'll guarantee that this monster won't be in the center at least it'll just be somewhere off on the side so let's do that let's have from the dark blue motion category we can have it go to the zero zero origin 
and then we can have it point in a random direction so point in direction and we'll need to go to the green operator section to get this pick random number block and change this range from negative 180 to 180 and the reason we have that is because the direction values always start at the lowest there at the bottom at negative 180 and then they start getting bigger and bigger and bigger and there is zero at the very top and then they start getting bigger and bigger and bigger until they're at positive 180 back at the bottom again so that's why we have this range from negative 180 to 180 so it'll point in some random direction and then we can just have it move a whole bunch in that direction so from the dark blue motion category let's just have it move I don't know 200 steps and now we're going to want to add, so once it's off on the side, we want to add code that will just have it float around. How are we going to do that? Well, let's think about this. We could use the glide tool, uh, the glide block right here, and that will cause a smoothly moving, a smooth movement in to this XY destination. So we need to figure out what we want this destination to be though. So you know, we would want it to be something that's based on the current X and Y position of the monster, and then maybe just a few pixels off. But, you know, something something random. So maybe let's try this. Let's go to the green operator section and grab this plus. So the destination X coordinate where this uh, monster will just float to, it'll be random, but it'll also be based on the current X position of the monster. So go to the blue motion category at the very bottom there's this X position bubble and this X position bubble is kind of like a variable it'll always be the number the of the X coordinate of the monster so if the monster is over here you can see its X value will be 65 so this will be destination X is 65 plus and then something else we'll want to have a slightly random destination let's say somewhere between negative 10 and 10 so it'll be the exact same X position of where it is, but somewhere in the range of 10 pixels to the left or 10 pixels to the right. That seems pretty good. And we can right click on the green plus sign and then select duplicate and use that for the Y value as well. It's kind of tricky when the blocks get this big, but make sure the left edge of that green plus block is over the Y bubble. You can see it'll highlight white when that happens. Instead of X position, of course, we want Y position. So go back to the dark blue motion category and select the Y position bubble. So, oh yeah, and we don't want this to just happen once. We want it to keep happening after we've moved the monster away from the center. So let's go to orange control and grab this forever loop. That seems pretty good. Maybe one second is too slow. So, well, let's test this out. Click on the green flag. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe the monster moved a little too far away. Let's, I don't know, make this 180. Let's click on the green flag to restart it. There we go. Hey, that looks pretty good. Maybe to, just to make the game a little bit tougher, let's change this to 0 0.5. So now it's moving twice as fast as before, which is still kind of slow, but has enough randomness where it's a little unpredictable. Hmm. Monster seems to be pretty localized. Oh, that's, we can keep it like this. And let's go ahead and also add a slight swerving animation because the monster wasn't just sort of moving around, but also kind of like gently swaying around in space. So we're gonna add a different script to this sprite. So when green flag is clicked, we'll add a different forever loop. And this code will just handle the gentle swaying animation part. Let's see, we'll have to have something that, you know, either we want this to sway to the left or sway to the right, or that is clockwise and counterclockwise. Let's have this if else block. So one of these will be swerving clockwise and the other will be swerving counterclockwise and we can just have it randomly decide which one to do by picking a random number of course we can't put this here so let's just say if this random number from one to two is one we'll do the if part and if it's two we'll do the else part so we can grab this equal block which we can fit 
in that hexagon slot. So this random number one to two, which is kind of like a like a coin toss if you think about it, where instead of heads you have one, and instead of tails you have two. And if you wanted to ever simulate a dice, uh, a die, you could just have it one to six. So it's kind of like a if you roll some dice, they'll come up between one and six. Whereas here you can have a random number one to six. We just want it one out of two. So if this is equal to you know heads or the one, we'll do this code which we can just have a gentle swerving turning code right here. And I guess we can add turning in the other direction. Let's just see how this looks. Whoa, <laughs> that's, that's not gentle swerving. That's kind of crazy looking swerving. Let's reduce this, say, like down to one or two, or hey, let's just make it a random number one to two. So sometimes it's only turning by one degree or sometimes it's turning by two degrees. And we can grab another one for here. Yeah, and so that kind of looks a little bit different. Maybe just have it one to three. That looks pretty good. That's a little too gentle though. Let's want to have multiple turns here. So maybe we can put these turn blocks inside of a uh, repeat block from the orange control section. Grab this repeat 10 loop and I'll just add another repeat 10 there hey yeah that looks pretty good wow yeah so you can see it's sort of like oh I'm lost in space but I will say bargle if I touch you and then cause the game to be over but yeah that's pretty good oh we forgot to start slowly switching the uh, the animations as well we can just add that here to this script. So go to the purple looks category and just select uh, next costume. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's that's pretty good actually. <laughs> that's great. Oh yeah, we need to add some code to uh, detect if it's touching the robot. And in that case, because you know if the robot crashes into it, we need it to end the game. So we can add that to this forever loop. I'm just gonna move this off to the side a little bit. Let's see, so we need an if block, because if it's touching the robot, and that touching block is in the light blue sensing category, so if touching, and we'll just say we won't count it if it's touching the rocket thrusters, but if it's touching the body, then we can just have the the alien monster say bargle, or it could say, could say hello for two seconds, but we'll just say bargle, one, 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 and then... Just to translate that, game over. We'll say that for two seconds. And then right after that, then it'll stop all of the scripts and it'll stop the program. So in the orange control section, grab this stop all block and fit it inside right there. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna right click here and select clean up to organize this kind of nicer. Oh. I actually put that right there, and that's not that great. Oh, okay. Okay, this looks good. Awesome. Okay, stop that. And now we just want... Oh, we should probably test this out to make sure that the... Touching the monster... Bargle! Game over, and then... Stopped. Great. Oh, wow. That worked out wonderfully. Okay, so now let's add a second monster just by right-clicking on monster one and selecting duplicate. And Scratch will detect that it ends with a number, so it'll call the next one Monster 2. Okay, now we're going to duplicate this again, except this time, for instead of Monster 3, let's just rename this uh, Penguin 1. And really, the Penguin and the Monster Code are fairly similar. They just look kind of... Uh, they just look different. To change this, we're going to choose a costume from the library. Let's see, the penguin would be under animals. I'm just going to scroll down here. There we go, penguin. Penguin to talk A. That looks good. Whoa, that's that's a huge penguin. Uh, make sure I'm going to delete this old one. And then click on that again. I want to add the second penguin animation. Oh, not things. Animals are not things. Animals are animals. I'll grab this little waving one. Click OK. 
well, these are these are kind of huge. Um, I want to shrink them down by the exact same amount because otherwise they'll be slight. Well, I'll just eyeball it. We'll just work on it. Yeah. So I'm going to shrink it down to about that size. Switch to the other penguin costume. Select that. Shrink it down to about the same size and hopefully we can see as I change the costumes it looks sort of the same except for that arm. That's a little bit off. Let me try selecting this and moving it closer to the center. Oh, you can see the, the arm waving one is kind of bigger still. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'll just shrink this down just a little bit more. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. So, now this penguin has the exact same code as the old sprite. Let me just click on this arrow to shrink the stage and increase the script area. So we don't want that exactly. Instead, we want this... We'll get rid of that game over code. Instead, we want the penguin to add a point to the score variable every time it gets picked up. And then it'll disappear and then reappear somewhere else. Let's do this one step at a time. So when you touch the penguin, or rather when the penguin detects that it's touching the robot body, we're going to go to this orange data section. We're going to change score by one, so that'll increase the score. And then we're also going to hide the penguin, so go to looks in the purple section and grab this hide. Then we're just going to have it wait a few seconds so that it, we don't, uh, we're actually going to be reusing all of these sprite penguins, but we want a new penguin to appear, sort of like it's a brand new penguin. So let's just have it wait for a few seconds. Yeah, because we're not actually creating new penguin sprites. We're just hiding the old one when it gets picked up and then having it appear in some random new direction. So it looks like it's a brand new penguin. So wait, and then we just move this to somewhere randomly on the board. And to do that, in the dark blue motion category, we'll grab the go to x, y block. And we want this to be a random place on the screen. So if you move your mouse around the stage area, you can see right here the x and y position of the mouse cursor will change and so you can see the highest x value is 240 and the lowest x value is negative 240 and the highest y value is 180 and the lowest y value is negative 180 so we can just pick a random number between those ranges for the x and y so go to the green operator section and grab this pick random 1 to 10 and a pick random 1 to 10 for the x and the y. And remember, x was negative 240 to 240, and y was negative 180 to 180. And after that, we'll just have the penguin show itself again. So, whenever it touches, so if it's touching the body, it'll change the score by one and then hide itself. It'll wait four seconds just to make it. Uh, not immediately look like the penguin's instantly teleporting someplace, but it'll look like, oh, there's a brand new penguin that just showed up. And then, but we'll secretly move, while it's hidden, move this penguin sprite somewhere randomly on the screen and then show itself again. So let's test this out. I'm going to click on that arrow to make this big again. So yeah, so you can see the penguin doesn't start off in the same, in the center area because it has that same monster code right here where it just picks a, it starts off in the center and then goes somewhere uh, 180 steps away from the center. So let me pick up that penguin. Uh, it, nope, no, oh, wait. Wow, this game's kind of hard. Um, and two and three, and okay, hey, all right. And score increased by one, the penguin disappeared. Oh, hey, there's this brand new penguin. It's totally not the old penguin that we just reused the sprite. It's that appeared four seconds later. Okay, we can go ahead and pick that one up. Yeah, uh, uh, three, uh, no, two, yes, one, and two, and two again. All right, hey, picked up that penguin. Now my score is two. But then if I hit the monster accidentally, uh, bargle, game over, and the game stops. 
So, well, now we can just duplicate the penguin sprites and add as many penguins as we want. And that's the entire game. Wow, so they're all just swerving around in space. And you have these rocket thrusters. You can't really control where they're pointing, but you can turn them off and on. And that's the entire game. It takes some getting used to these controls, but I think this is pretty fun. Or you can just give up and just fire all rockets and hope you don't run into a monster, but that obviously didn't work for me. Okay, if you have any questions, just feel free to leave a comment in the comment section or email me. Um, and thanks for watching.